Hey there, this is Horner, and this is the 2005 AP Physics Not B, but one modified question, uh, free response question. Notice this is form B. So uh, if you've looked at 2005 AP Physics 1, not form B, that one's a lot shorter than this one. This one's a little longer, has a little bit more to it, but it's the same type of question. You have a student of Mass M stand on a platform scale and an elevator in a tall building. So they are standing on an elevator, but they're also standing on top of a scale so that they can see what happens to their weight. And there's a lab that you can do that does the same thing where you watch somebody who's about 200 pounds and you watch their weight go up 20 and down 20 pounds as the elevator starts and stops and accelerates and decelerates. So the first thing they want us to do is draw a free body diagram for the person uh, stand, uh, represented by the dot below. And just as we've done before, if they're in the elevator, MG is down, and then the bottom of the elevator, which in this case is going to be the scale, is holding them up, and so that is FN. Ideally, you probably get one point for each one of those, although in the new AP1 exam, both of them together, as long as they are the same length and labeled correctly and in opposite directions, you would get one point instead of two. Next thing they want us to do is derive an expression for the reading on the scale in terms of the acceleration A of the elevator, the mass of the student, and any fundamental constant. So let's use this as our example, and it says the positive direction is upward. So if the elevator is accelerating up, we could call it positive. So let's go ahead and do that. The sum of the forces is equal to, now in this case, the elevator is accelerating. So they tell you to solve for acceleration, so you have to assume it's accelerating. So instead of zero, that's equal to m times a. Up is fn. We see that uh, down is mg, so we're going to subtract mg, and that's equal to ma. Uh, they want us to drive an expression for the reading on the scale. Remember, fn is also the apparent weight or the reading on the scale. So we need to get it all by itself and put everything else on the other side. We can do this in terms of the mass of the student and fundamental constants. Um, and uh, we've got to, uh, oops, it says drive an expression for the reading on the scale, yeah. So we can also use A on the other side. So this is going to be MA plus MG. And so now if we go ahead and do a little bit of algebra and just kind of combine terms here, we can factor out the M and then we'd have A plus G. So that would be your final answer for letter B. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next page. On the next page, it says an inspector provides the student with the following graph. So here is a graph. Notice what I would do is always circle what it is. That way you see it. It is acceleration versus time. And that means uh, that it's not velocity versus time and it's not position versus time. So you have to remember this one is acceleration versus time. And you'll see that it actually has a changing acceleration, which we normally don't deal with. It says a student is asked to determine the time interval in which the force exerted by the platform scale is at a min maximum value. So it's really high. The student says it's uh, maximum at 2 to 4 seconds and at 12 to 16 seconds. So they're looking at it here and they're looking at it here. They want to know what statement and reasoning, if any, is correctly indicated by the student's response. So we're going to tackle this using the PEE format. And so we're going to say the max force is at 12 to 16 seconds. Now we actually have to continue with that. So here our evidence is we have a positive 1.2 meter per second squared acceleration from 12 to 16 seconds. So we can just see this is 1.0, 0.2, 4, 6, 8, and 2.0. And because of that, our explanation says since F is equal to MA and A is a maximum at 12 to 16, then therefore, so I'm going to use that dot sign means therefore, F is max at 12 to 16. So as long as you have all those, you would get all the points. You'd actually get three points 
for saying that in that uh, in that way. The next thing they want us to do is say what is wrong with the student statement. And so the only thing that we see really that's wrong with this is they said that the force is a maximum also from 2 to 4. And notice it is not. It's a very uh, negative number. So um, they are assuming that we're going to say positive is maximum and negative is going to be minimum. Uh, so at this point, we need to say uh, our P. So this is our point. Um, it is not a max at 2 to 4 seconds. And what is not a max? We know that the force is not a max at 2 to 4 seconds. Our evidence is the acceleration is equal to negative 1.6 meters per second squared. And so our explanation is since F is equal to MA, uh, if I have a negative A, then I have a negative F, and that would be the smallest or the minimum force. And that would be your explanation, so another three points there. Next thing they want us to do is calculate the magnitude of the maximum force for a 45 kilogram student. So we've already done an equation. We said Fn is equal to m times a plus g. We did that uh, back a couple steps. And so our mass here is 45. The acceleration is positive 1.2. And we need to add that to gravity, which is 10. And so we end up with 504 newtons. Next part is during what time interval is the speed of the elevator constant. So let's go back to the graph and try to figure out where the speed of the elevator would be constant. Constant speed is where the acceleration is zero. So if our acceleration is zero, notice it's not zero here, it's flat. But it is zero from 7 to 10 and from 17 to 20 seconds. So we want where our acceleration is actually zero. Be careful, it's not zero there and it's not zero here, it actually has some values. Let's go ahead and go back to that part of the question and go ahead and fill it in. And it says during what time intervals, and we said it would be from 7 to 10 seconds and from 17 to 20 seconds. So justify our answer. And here we can just say if speed is constant, then the acceleration is equal to zero. That's our evidence. And now we can say since the acceleration is equal to zero at 7 to 10 and from 17 to 20 seconds, uh, V is or has to be constant. And that is the end of that question.